things that we've struggled with a few years ago, um, and, and we've, we've struggled with this for a long time, but particularly with the move from an older curriculum to the uh, YUSA swim lesson curriculum was how do we help um, parents find what they're looking for and know which lesson to per, uh, purchase. So if, if you were to go into swim lessons, and you were to look at the youth swim lessons page, anyone who's familiar with aquatics should know that there are you know, six different swim lesson, swim, six different swim lesson levels. That is very hard to say for, uh, for children who um, are between the ages of three, I think it's 14. Um, but if you were to look at just our large list, um, even sim even limiting it by a, a center, there are just all of these swim lesson sessions. Um, and then even if I were to remove the swim lessons stage three that I had applied on there before, they're just sessions upon sessions upon sessions, and it can get quickly overwhelming. And so on our previous site, we worked with our aquatics department to build a swim lesson finder where we would help guide parents through an experience that would ask them questions about their their child's age and level so that they could find the swim lesson level that's appropriate for them and on our new site we use the web form module to build this so if you were to go to our swim lesson finder for example you would see a question that says how old is the student swimmer and if they chose between three and 12 years another question would appear if they said yes, another question would appear until they reach the end. It, as soon as they say not yet, or they're not willing to go underwater voluntarily, for example, the swim lesson that we recommend would appear with this nice little icon that we have, and then it would show the, the centers that typically offer this level of swim lessons. And again, the, the tool that we use to, to build it um, was the web form module. So if you haven't made use of it um, that much, um, you would go into your structure and down to the web forms section. I'm going to open this in the new tab here. And if I'm going to go into the swim lesson selector and I click this little build button right here, we use this experience that we have in here to, to build and to ask our questions these, uh, or ask parents these questions that would help them find uh, the swim lesson level that they are looking for. And one of the things that impresses me the most about this, um, this experience, this web form element, is that it is perhaps one of the best documented features that I've ever run across. Um, it is what in Drupal language is called a contributed module, meaning a developer created it and, um, and put it out there for people to use. They maintain it regularly and they have a large, large library of training videos that are built right into the user interface. So right here, we have this header up here that says the element page allows users to add, update, duplicate, and delete elements in the wizard pages. You click on the watch video button and this appears right here. It may not show because I'm, I'm screenshotting. But if you click on the uh, additional elements, it's got some uh, specific documentation for developers. And if you want to look at more videos, it takes you to the developer channel. The developer's name is Jacob Rockowitz. And I highly, highly recommend that you start exploring this module. Um, when when you try to create experiences like this and particularly view the documentation we obviously won't get to that advanced level today um, but if you wanted to take this module for a test drive if you're using the sandbox or a demo site you don't have this enabled already you would go to up here to the extend tab and scroll down to the bottom where it has the web form session section and click on the web form UI uh, checkbox and then click install. And this may take a minute for it to install. 
But what this will do is it will allow you to build a web form without having to learn any markup, without having to do anything super, super technical. The experience is essentially you, you create a, a web form element such as a text box, a check mark, uh, a drop down element, and you build it sequentially so that you have a, a web form that is, is usable and that you can test out. And then you also have the ability to create um, emails and handlers, which basically amounts to when someone submits something, you can notify the customer that their submission has been accepted. And you can also notify uh, whoever's in your operations department or whoever's responsible for that particular web form to, um, you can notify them of that person's responses or, or input into that web form. And it's super, super flexible. You can use it for a ton of different uh, different use cases. Um, so after you installed that web form uh, UI module, you go into the web forms L, uh, um, section under structure. So it's down here. And then when you click on the blue add web form button, you can tile it my web form. You don't need an administrative description. Let's see if this pops here. But you see this entire section right here where you can add different elements onto the page. So different questions you wanna ask somebody. You can add different pages. So you can create something called like a guided step where if it's a really long web form, you can have a multi-page web form that has a progress bar at the top. And you can even add a little bit of layout to it as well. Um, the other great thing about this is that the submissions are able for you to export so for in our case we use this for our member referral program we run an automation that pulls that scrapes the data out of our open y site and that we use to to validate uh, submission entry so that we can approve or deny a a member referral discount on on someone's uh, application so that's very high level. We don't have, I don't think we have the time to like really get into the weeds with it. Um, but if anybody has any questions, wants to see something demoed, we have the whole experience set up right here. Wow. Uh, David, I just um, slacked hip and said, I'm so glad we're recording this. So for all of you that are listening, and I know that that some of you probably have questions, but just so you know, um, Nathan Hippenmeyer is still recording. He's going to chunk this part off. Um, so there will be a, a tutorial video or a recording anyway of this call. Um, so we can post that to the message board um, in, the, in the web form thread for all of us. Um, related to your automation, um, is that the only place that you're using uh, automation in the web forms? Or are you doing other things with um, Middle Tennessee? I think you'd mentioned Win Automation. Yeah, so we're using a Win Automation uh, program to to basically scrape that that's the only thing that we're really using at the moment um okay we have we have certain contact forms that go to an automated uh, ticketing system um but it's not it's not to that that same degree that the uh the win automation is running what we're testing out right now this is very uh preliminary but uh we use uh we use emma um, as one of the tools for email and uh, currently we're, we're testing out whether or not this could be a solution to where we could hook up OpenY either directly or indirectly um, to Emma through a connector called Zapier. Um, I know that this is something that the folks at Brandywine have, mm -hmm. have implemented for, uh, for their own use cases and so we, we've begun some kind of fairly basic testing about whether or not it can trigger something that's automated but um Wait, because so you can use any wine yeah at david so it'll work sorry what sorry what was that i said we're doing that at brandy wine so mm -hmm. we can i can talk to you about that if there are some hiccups and things i'm happy to kind of chat through with you perfect yeah is this jenny it is jenny hey jenny do you want to just share a little bit now yeah I'd um love to here so we use that here as it's essentially just kind of like a pass through, right? You can take your web form data and migrate it to a bunch of different places. 
Um, so on our site, we mostly use our web forms for lead generation campaigns. And so people are putting in, you know, our try the why process, for example, or, um, you know, they're interested in swimming lessons or youth sports. And we take that data out of Drupal and populate it automatically to a Google sheet so that individuals at our branches can kind of track their follow up pretty easily. And then we also send it over to my Emma and trigger an automation, um, like an automated email response from there. Nice. Hey, Jenny, this is Liz from Lancet of the Triangle. Um, have you guys, have you or David looked at, um, we're an Emma client too, and we have been trying for a while to figure out how to sync up some of our flows with Emma, and I'm wondering if either of you have um, used Emma's API or their sort of SQL-ish kind of table sync up to do any work, or whether you're relying on Zapier and if that is satisfactory um, for everything that yeah. you're trying to do. So I'm going to start this conversation by saying we're moving off of Emma, um, mm -hmm. and their automations are a big reason for that. So you can do it. Um, you can do yeah. it through Zapier, um, and it's it's pretty simple, but you start to run into challenges where if you're in Emma, it doesn't recognize it. I could get this wrong and I can follow up with you um, when I kind of check through some of the emails, but it, it, it doesn't always trigger um, a new customer email if the person's already in your system. Um, so for example, you have a person that completed our try the why process or they're a current member and then they fill out a youth sports interest form it won't trigger a new automation for them all the time because they're already in I, my emma does that make sense yeah we've um we have really and i'm sorry amber we're getting a little off topic here I no apologize. that's have, fine um, this is all for the good of the education no problem at all we have really dove into Emma's auto, Emma's own automation system and very quickly ran into um, it's limited. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's a, I'm trying to think of a very fair way to put that. Um, some limitations that we didn't expect. And um, Emma's great. We've been yeah. with them for a long time, but it involved us instead of just setting up literally one automation flow for new members. And we were segmenting based on the membership type. And then we wanted to segment kind of after that too. And we ended up having to send basically set up four automations where we could have done one with the correct style of branching and segmentation. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So who are you going to instead of Emma, if you don't mind me asking on a public forum? <laughs> um, we're with HubSpot, so we're onboarding with HubSpot now. Okay. Oh yeah, you did mention that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and it was, it's great for simple automations. It works, it sends the email. We have the Emma API um, set up on our site. So I don't know if, um, I don't know how, how that's built out or if you could kind of ask your developers to borrow that from us. Um, it, they do come through, if you use Emma to do it, um, we have it set up so that it comes through as new. It'll trigger an automation every time, regardless mm -hmm. of whether on the system or not. Um, and you can use like contact fields and things like that and you can use, web forms to do that directly in Emma through the API or Zapier. Um, but yeah, it, it's very limited in how you can trigger automations and how many you need to build out. Yeah. Um, so I think if you're looking to do pretty simple things, it, it worked for us for about two years um, mm -hmm. and that was sufficient. And now as we're looking to kind of create more um, robust workflows, it's it's become more challenging. But anyone that's going in and downloading like a database of information from um, Drupal, I highly recommend looking at Zapier. It's relatively inexpensive and it will take all of that data and port it over to like a, a Word doc or an Excel doc, um, a Google Sheet, something that you can kind of more easily share out and you don't have to be logging into Drupal and exporting that. Thank you. That yeah, is, that would be amazing. Thank you. Really helpful. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, um, I think this is definitely going to be one of those workshop uh, discussions that happen at the summit for for those of you that are still spending time with us. Thank you. And uh, David uh, Wells and Nathan Hippenmeyer uh, are leading our programming and agenda team along with Paige and Craig. And one of the things we heard over and over and over uh, in last year's results and anecdotally as well is we want more time um, for sharing and for having these types of discussions. And so this is our baby step towards that. Uh, the summit will be a lot around workshops, um, on these types of topics. And we are gonna make sure to build in lots and lots of um, break time to have these kinds of discussions informally as well. And so Liz, thank you for that question. And Jenny, thank you for sharing. Um, because I, I, I don't think we're off topic because our digital ecosystem uh, is all connected as we all know. And so uh, you, it really doesn't make sense to have a web forms conversation without talking about um, the applications of, of such data. So thanks you guys. Um, David, I know you probably had a few more things to share and there was some basketball arena that kept on popping up on your screen. I don't know what that was all about. Um. <laughs> the bowling arena, the home of the, uh... The Tennessee Volunteers. Here they are oh. losing to South to uh, North Carolina <laughs> Tower Heels a couple of years ago. They've been doing a lot of losing, but you know, last year they were the number one team in the country for four weeks, and that's uh, about as good as our program's done ever. No championships. <laughs> oh, I'm from Minnesota. I well know that. <laughs> um, yeah. I anything mean, else? Oh, I was just going to say that it's really I. It's really just uh, yeah, I didn't have anything like, you know, that I specifically like needed or 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 felt like was uh, you know really pressing to to talk about it because okay. the, again the web form module is so um, it's so robust um, and I can I can go back to the example of our our swim lesson finder. Um, so if you go into here, you go into Swim Lesson Finder and you have the uh, the build button. Um, one of the things that we discovered while using the Swim Lesson Finder was that you didn't need to have a submit button. You didn't need to have someone submit their contact information to make use of the, of the functionality. What we were able to do was to essentially ask a question and then show and hide different answers based on the user's responses. And you can do things such as add animations to it. So if you see this field right here that says conditional and it says visible slide, what you have when you go into edit a particular element, you have all of like the, the things that you need to populate such as, all right, here's some descriptive text. Here's if you're doing like a, um, an option select, a drop down. you can add what you want the question and then the different responses to be. But if you go under do, under conditions, you can also have it do like a nice little slide animation or just show or hide um, based on someone's response to uh, another question. So if I were to demonstrate that on the page itself, I can find my way back to it. I'm selecting that my 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 student swimmer is six to thirty six months. It has that nice little animation that slides beneath that. You don't need to know any code to be able to do any anything like that at all. Um, another key feature that I've sort of amid, uh, alluded to was the ability to send uh, custom emails to different people based on a on a certain response. So if I can find our uh, member referral application and I go to build. We have the ability to to like build the um, form itself. So it's got like members, first name, last name, email address, et cetera. I think if I go to um, if I go to the settings and I go to email slash handlers. Actually, it's not sending anything out of this one. I'm kind of surprised. I didn't I didn't build this particular uh, this particular form, but you have an entire section where you can add an email or you can add a handler, an email being obviously an email and the handler um, basically 
a conditional statement determining when and to whom that email gets gets sent. So if you have um, a contact form for swim lessons, you can add a handler that sends that email to different people based on the center that they that um, that they choose. So if you have one person at one location, one person at another location, if they choose option A, it, that email is not going to go to center contact at option B. So I mean, those are those are co uh, two like the key features that I think are are really important are just being able to add conditional statements, which is something we weren't able to do, and the sheer variety of the different types of elements that you can add onto a web form, such as image and file uploads, um, different experiences and how people uh, submit information, but also custom emails that get sent to uh, um, to different people based on responses. And David, Jenny Lee just mentioned that uh, Handler is where you would add the, the Zapier um, webhook as well. Mm -hmm. Jenny, are you, are you still on? Yeah. Okay, do you want to share? Um, sure, I don't know. Or just talk through it. Yeah, I, was gonna say, I think you just add a remote post in there. So I'll, if David on your screen, if you just go to remote post and then hit add handler, mm -hmm. when you go into Zapier, if you pick the option to trigger a Zapier, like a zap based on a webhook, it's gonna give you like a webhook URL and you just paste it into that completed URL field. Okay. So anytime yeah. you build a zap, if you want the zap to trigger based on a um, like a webhook, you're just kind of like sending that data to a URL. It's going to pull it down from that webhook, um, and then within Zapier, you map all the data. So next steps would be, it's amazing. Yeah, um, you you're getting lots the, of feedback on this. Is amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a ton of different uses for it. We largely just use it to populate. You know, we have a childcare lead form. Um, we need multiple members of our child care team to go in and follow up with those people um, so they can go to the Google Sheet they can see we can use filters and um, all of that in our Google Sheet and then they set notifications right in the Google Sheet for who they want to um, you know when they want to get notified when that form gets updated uh, but essentially you just drop the webhook in there and then within Zapier you send a test through your web form and it's going to show you the data you have and you map it um, so you're going to set up like if you want a Google Sheet, by for example, you set up all your headers in the Google Sheet, um, and then you'll kind of see in Zapier your, your headers and your web form fields, and you tell them what data you want to go under what headers. So Jenny, I'm looking into my crystal ball, and I'm seeing a continuation of this discussion, perhaps. Um, at the tail end of March or at the end of the March call where we talk about this in a little more depth. What what do you think, you and David sort of co-presenting from web form to web hooks? Sure, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to share. It certainly has saved us a lot of time and um, uh -huh. I'm very thankful that we found it. Um, so I'm happy to kind of share how we're using it. it it's really simple once you're in there, honestly. Once you know to where to place that web hook, um, everyone on this call would be able to kind of map the data once you there's a small learning curve, but. Sweet, I can tell from the responses from Sarah Baker and Liz, they're like, yeah, let's do it. And I am all about it. So um, I will connect with you one-to-one -one, uh, and figure out how we build that next edu session. Um, and I look forward to having you all on that as well. Um, and then David and, and Hip, I think, um, considering how we, weave this into a, a forum or a, a workshop session or just a, a discussion, birds of a feather discussion at this year's summit would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and Liz, I, I echo that. Thank you, all of you, for the extra time today and, and for sharing your knowledge. And I think this is exactly how we will evolve as a community. And um, like we're all we're going to learn the best tricks from from one another. Um, so. I really, really appreciate uh, those of you that shared. Thank you, Stephen, for asking the question, <laughs> and um, David and and Hip for staying on to to chat about it. Jenny for sharing your uh, expertise, and Liz for for asking the good questions. And we'll um, continue this with next month's call, and then I will also. Um, 
hip will will share the the recording link when it's ready to go but i'll also send a little um i'll send it out or announce it at the the beginning of next week's excuse me use your words amber next month's call <laughs> so everybody who didn't get to stay on for the whole time knows about it um because this is pure gold as liz said life-changing magic right here so um so thank you everybody this was super cool uh i totally appreciate it and um yeah wow i'm once again more excited about open wide than ever it's a good thing to yeah. be I wanted to, um, we you kind of mentioned that uh, on the call, but just real briefly, um, for those of you who are still on, um, trying to get a group of people together, this is not related to web form at all, um, get a group of people together to um, just be part of a, a small group to pilot a, a webinar where we talk about how to use different paragraphs inside of Open Wine. Yes. Um, so my, my side gig for the last few months has been building out some content editor documentation. And as Nathan can attest to, even screenshot videos take a long time. And so as that's being built up and we're building up like a paragraph library and all of that, don't want people who are in open wide to be without, um, help or resources on how to use the different layout elements to build layouts inside of open wide. So if you're interested or know someone who would be interested, just have them reach out to me and we can uh, schedule something together. And if it's something that the community wants, uh, we can definitely keep doing it. Um, show of hands, it looks like James is uh, interested. Um, Liz, my guess is you probably would be as well. Sarah Baker. Um, David, is that something, I know that uh, this has come up with a, a smaller co cohort of folks. Is it something that you want to share on the Slack channel and have folks raise their hands there? Or how would you like to connect to everybody? Uh, Slack would be great. I can I can post something there and just if they re react with a, a positive emoji, then I will, <laughs> I will get a group together. Sounds good. <laughs> Use a true. llama and then he'll know. <laughs> yeah. I'm um, giving an example, please. <laughs> Oh. How do you know you're in? Oh no. Means I'm trying to figure out what to do here. Is that what it? Hmm. Oh, we always are. Always high school, open Y, high school. Relive it every day. It's so fun for all of us. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, David, I, oh, Chrissy wants to see the emoji. Um, Hip, if you could share that with her uh, via Slack, that would be great. Um, and so, uh, Chrissy Norton, yep. Coming in from Washington, uh, Hip, you or excuse me, D Dubs, you've got James Needles and then Liz Stevenson already as uh, signing on to your webinar. Um, but everybody else, just be on the lookout for that post to Slack, and we'll we'll get this party started here, uh, talking about paragraphs, and then we'll continue with web forms and and web hooks uh, after next week's call. I will try to be better about scheduling so that we um, don't keep you for an extra half an hour, but definitely plan to stay for an extra 15 minutes, which I will be very clear about in my um, in my next agenda. All right. All right. Loving you guys and meaning it. Thank you so much. All right. I don't think it had anything to do with you. Agree. I think, I think that people had had things to leave, and also they're like, I can't understand anything that this this person from Nashville is saying. He sounds like <laughs> just a bunch of rocks. A bunch of and why is up he against the microphone? Top? <laughs> uh yeah no hip i don't think it had anything to do with you at all i think it was like oh i've got a 12 30 meeting i better take a bio break because that's exactly what i looked at I was like oh we're way close to 12 30 so um yeah. so we're not rethinking it you're still the mc you're not off the hook you still have things to do okay i'm gonna hang up now all right. I got to go eat lunch. All Bye, right. everybody. Bye.